What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheelman, Alex Cornup. We're here with the best B-Class car I have ever driven. Best does not mean fastest. Best does not mean quickest. Best does not mean best handling. Best means package deal, start to finish. I think this is the most optimal. And I think it is probably the best handling. This car is really, really good. We're delving into the Porsche RSR for B-Class. It's the 1973. This car is amazing. My boy Sloth was working on it. My boy Neil had... Neil went through and did four different builds for this car with different horsepower options, different motor options. And then my boy Sloth went and tested it. Then we optimized a little bit. So Nil and Sloth came in on this one. Super clutch. This car is amazing. Then Cube started driving it. And it's like Cube's favorite car in B-Class. And he claims it's no cheese. So this is a cheeseless build for you guys. With the way this performs, I don't know how it can't be a cheese build. But regardless, this thing will slay all the other B-Class cars. Doesn't have the top speed. But my god, it gets to 130 immediately and it turns better than anything else so big shout out to my guys nil sloth and then cube for just proving that this car rocks and i drive it watch the clips at the end i do voice overlay for the race clips so you can kind of see what i do and i can walk you through what i'm doing as i do it so maybe you can get a little insight on that by no means am I giving you the most optimal line or am I trying to show you something that is maybe better than someone else. I'm just showing you what I do so that way you can get an idea of how I'm driving the cars to maybe get some insight on that yourself. But with no further ado, this is the 911 Carrera RSR 2.8 1973. The engine we're running on this one you guys is the second one over. It is the 2.6 liter i6 280 brake horsepower when you start. For the parts, we are running just basic induction. We are running the Sport ECU. We are running the basic fuel system. We are running the Sport exhaust. We are running the Super Roots Supercharger. We are running Sport Nitrous. We are running Elite Road Suspension. We are doing Super Brakes. We are doing Elite Grip Tires. We are doing just the basic clutch. We are doing the four speed transmission. We are doing the elite differential. For the auxiliary, I run nitrous grip. I run nitrous near miss. Up to you what you do on that. If you find yourself in second or third drafting people, maybe do the nitrous draft. If you're a drifty boy, maybe do the drift, but I don't think you're gonna be drifting this car. It doesn't like drifting very much. It likes to grip and go fast. This is a good car to learn manual transmission. It only has four gears. You launch in third, and then you just go third, fourth, fourth, third, third, fourth, up and down. Three, four, three, four, three, four, all day long. That's You never use second or first gear ever in this car. There's no reason to. Even when you get a restart, you immediately shift into third. It's got enough horsepower and enough torque to just carry you through, and it's very optimal to run just third and fourth gear. So learn it. Manual transmission is the meta right now, guys. If you want to be fast, don't ask me for the best build for any class if you are driving in automatic because it is faster for you to learn manual and drive a suboptimal car than it is to have the best car and drive auto. Like two players, same car, same level. The manual driver is going to launch harder, leave harder, and be two seconds ahead at the beginning of the race. And so why not give yourself that two second advantage? Is it difficult? Yes. Most things in life worth learning are a little difficult. In this video game, it is. If you just refuse to learn, that's fine. The build's still gonna be great. You're still gonna love it, I'm sure. But if you're looking to be the best, if you wanna be on meta, if you wanna have the best car, you need to drive with the best transmission. That's manual, you guys. Practice. Shifting with the bumpers on the controller is a little tough. R1, you know, L L1, L2, whatever. Um, for the Xbox controllers, it's right bumper, left bumper. It's worth it, though. It's worth it. And if you're playing with mouse and keyboard, Godspeed to you. Shift with whatever buttons you guys have set up. For the handling on this car, we are full 80% grip. It's 
steering sensitivity I'm two clicks over downforce all the way high you can run it pretty much anywhere in that area but I think it needs the downforce keeps it really planted traction control is off drift entry is off that is the performance portion of the build let me show you the body the style we're not running a body kit on this one we don't have wide fenders we do not have a splitter we do not have rear fenders that are wide that's the stock skinnies like there I can't make the car skinnier than that I am not running a diffuser uh, you can do any spoiler you want I liked the way that one looked and it didn't add any length to the car the reason I did this is because this thing is very very nimble it really turns very good a lot of the tracks in B class especially there's very tight corners and you it's a right turn then a sharp left turn and you got to line up the buildings and kind of cut through them narrow is better in those cases and this car didn't need a wide stance to be stable it's really stable when it's narrow so there's no reason to make the car longer or wider for performance gains uh, in reality this one don't do any body mods on it keep it keep it skinny it does really good that way if you want to do body mods do it that's fine but it, it didn't need them so I, that's why I didn't now I will say because we're not doing the wide body kit rims make a difference what wheels you pick is going to determine how wide the tire patch is so I am running the weld star um, RTs they are number 93 of 128 these are the widest rims in the game statistically like the each rim has a set width value these are the widest ones so they're going to give you the largest tire contact patch the size that you do doesn't change the contact patch so just be aware of that just make sure you're getting the right one and you can run any rims you want but i think this is the optimal grippy boys for the tires i run the kumos um they are number 25 26 27 and 28 out of 62. i think these are the most grippy tires some of the guys are running the toyos they really like the toyo tires so you might try both see what you think you might not notice a difference that's fine um when we're talking about just changing just the tires that's a hard thing to be able to really tell the difference because it's hard to be consistent enough to know which one's actually better than the other so do you that's the the wheels and tires are the only mod on this thing that i think matters for the body side of things other than the stance we are two clicks all the way from the left so it's one two there or three clicks from center one two three camber we're one click over in the front and one click over in the rear i don't think it needs any more than that it's pretty stinking grippy the way it is watch the clips you'll see how this car handles it's amazing i love it i talk you through all of that kind of try to show you what's going through my head while i'm racing um by no means am i trying to set record times or walk you through the very best optimal lines or anything like that i just grab some gameplay footage i walk you through what i'm doing one of the runs i crash or get pretty squirrely it gets pretty rough but it's i'm a human i'm not showing you here perfect amazing times i'm showing you what a real race looks like so that way you can do a real race and get similar performance other than that, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm at 1,000 subscribers now, which is huge. Um, we've grown a lot over the last month, and I'm really thankful for all of you guys watching these videos. And just keep coming back. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, follow, anything and everything that we can to you know, grow this channel. I'm thankful for it. That's why I'm doing the voiceovers for the gameplay clips. I recently added the gameplay crypt, so now we're doing voiceovers. I'm trying to make the content that I put out better for you guys. So let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right, you guys. In this clip, it's myself and Cube and Georgie, a few other guys. We are racing a Pista. You'll see him on the right. I launch in third gear, take off like a rocket ship. We walk the Testarossa, the Pista, and everybody else in here. Cube had to shoot up the right side. I had to go up the left. JD, he hit a yellow boost right there. It looks like a two, so that's how he caught us. And that'll be the last time we see him. So double grip turn. Going to use that boost to get up to speed. We're going to use the airborne to turn there for that yellow boost. I'm going to draft, try to collect as much as possible. Boom, we use it right there. You'll see that we're using yellow boost on corner entry. 
when you are using the yellow boost during that time after you hit it, there's like a maybe a half second or a full second of time, and you turn sharper with that engaged. And so watch how we use that. Myself and Cube both do it. I hit the curb there, gets the car a little loose, and that's why I drift instead of grip. He's coming over like a wrecking ball, pretty rough. It puts me offline. Typically, I'd want to be on the left-hand side for a better corner entry, so I swing out wide, clip the wall. But at the end of the day, my whole line is messed up through there because I was on the wrong side of the traffic. This is a really good line through there, you guys. If you end up going wide, you can go through that construction zone, and you'll find that you're able to do a little better. Cube and I are dead even here. He's got a little yellow boost he used there. I use mine, but we're already at top speed, so there's no way I can catch him. We're in the same car, same build. Overall, we very handily take that race. It was just him and I. Everybody else not in that car was struggling. And the gentleman in the pista, he takes third place, but only because it's a skill issue. For this clip, it's a lot of fun. This race was insane. So, same thing. Third gear launch, holding it steady. Rocket ship, we leave. CPAC down there, CPAC 72, he's the guy in the pista. So, keep an eye on that guy. Um, this is, I mean, we're walking away from that guy. We're 100 yards ahead, and this is the first corner. Yellow boost for the turn. Perfect. Yellow boost for this turn. Slow down, no yellow boost here. We're just going to take it easy. Yellow boost out of this one as soon as I get it. Now, I let off the gas here for just a second, slow down, hit the brakes, so that way I can take a tighter line. It stops me from hitting the jump and going on the tracks. Pretty easy acceleration. CPAC is over 100 yards behind us. He's the only competition we have in this race right now. You'll see it on three dots on the map. It's me, Cube, and that gentleman. We're just gone. This car is so good at handling. Top speed's only 130, but my God, it's a, it's a rocket ship on rails, man. It's so fast. Got to go wide around the ambulance. Typically, I like a tighter line through there. Yellow boost tight. Boom. Right through that corner. Now... This is a little wide. I don't hit the brakes soon enough, so I get a little out of shape. I'm trying to get out of the way because I know Cube's right behind me. I mess up this corner. Cube messes up that jump. We're both out of shape really bad. That one corner back there set us up both for failure there. Cube actually wrecked, and so that's going to cause him to have to do a reset, and he's trying to accelerate. This is where the guy in the pista takes him, and so... We both messed up that section. We both would have been first, second real easy. But the Pista, he, he can't touch me. Guy's in the 900 horsepower Pista, and he still can't keep up with the little baby RSR. That's definitely a skill issue. But at the end of the day, this car is great. Handles perfectly. You guys will love it. Build it. Love it.